Welcome to this episode of Outside Fun, where I'll be showing you how to collect sap from sugar maple trees to make maple syrup. So grab a notepad and let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is to identify a sugar maple tree. There are several different species of maple trees, but the best one to tap is a sugar maple. Sugar maples have about 2% sugar in their sap, while all the other maples have about 1%. So although the other maples can be used, the sugar maple is the superior species for making maple syrup. Notice how this sugar maple has bark that forms rough vertical plates that stick out from the tree. As the tree gets older, these plates will stick out even further. The young sugar maples will have smooth bark with whitish bluish blotches on the trunk. These blotches can also be seen on the young branch above. The sap only flows in late winter and early spring. You will know it is time to tap your trees when the temperatures stay below freezing at night and rises above zero during the day. This creates pressure in the tree during the night, which will help the sap flow stronger during the daytime. As well, the sap flows better on the sunny side of the tree. Once the sap starts to flow, it will continue to do so for about four to six weeks. That's how long it takes for the sap to transfer from the root system up into the branches. The sap is packed full of energy that the tree needs to produce leaves for the summer months. Knowing how to tap the tree properly ensures that the tree won't be harmed and that you'll be able to enjoy the fullness of its maple flavored bounty. Also, if you are planning on tapping your maple trees every year, make sure to drill your new hole at at least six inches away from last year's tap and if at all possible, rotate between trees so that they can have a break. Remember, if you are good to the tree, it will be good to not only you, but to the generations to come as well. First of all, you should only tap trees that are healthy. Secondly, the tree should be at least 31 inches in circumference before you tap it. If the tree is at least 63 inches in circumference, you can put two taps in it. And if the tree is 79 inches in circumference or over, it will be able to support three taps. But three taps is the limit. Also, when using multiple taps on the same tree, be sure to equally space them apart from each other. I know that the span of my arms is 74 inches, so when I wrap my arms around this tree, I know that it can easily support two taps. So you see, there are benefits to being a tree hugger. Now it's time to start the first tap. The best position to make the hole is about three to four and a half feet off the ground. On the south side of the tree, which is the side that will be getting the most sun, and for the best results, place the hole directly above a large root or below a tree branch, if you can. The size of drill bit you'll need is either a 7 sixteenths or a 5 sixteenths, and the hole should be about two to two and a half inches deep. I added a piece of tape at the two and a half inch mark on my drill bit so that I know where to stop drilling. When drilling into the tree, make sure the hole is angled slightly upward. This will help direct the sap down into your spout, also known as the spile. After the hole is made, you should see sap dripping out almost immediately. Now that the hole is made, it's time for the spile. Place the tapered end in the hole and gently tap it into place. Once the tap stops moving, give it a couple more taps, but leave it alone after that. If you try to force the tap any deeper, you'll risk harming the tree or breaking your spile. I enjoy the good old-fashioned design of the metal spiles, but my favorite spiles to use are the more modern plastic ones. They are easier to tap into the tree and easier to attach a line to.
Now all I have to do is hook up my lines to my collection containers on the ground. I purchased both kinds of spiles and the tubing from a local hardware store. You'll notice that as spring approaches, most hardware stores will have a small section devoted to maple syrup production. Now all you have to do is sit back and watch the sap collect. Before tapping, I disinfected all of my equipment in water diluted with bleach. This will ensure that no unwanted bacteria gets into the sap. This is important because although sap is mostly water at this stage, it can only last about a week in cool temperatures before it starts to go bad. In this way, maple sap should be treated like milk. Keep it cool and use it quickly. The advantage of having the sap on the ground, like I'm doing here, is that you can pile snow around the containers to help keep the sap cool. The ratio for making maple sap into maple syrup is 40 to 1. This means you'll need to boil 40 cups of sap down to make 1 cup of syrup. To see how maple sap is made into maple syrup, just click on the link that will be appearing now to see that episode. I am The Outsider, and I want to thank you for watching. Until next time.